So we did quite a bit of work on the magnetic field due to a long straight wire using a derived result. Another popular derived result, which comes up a lot, is the circular loop. Because what's good about the circular loop is that since a long straight current gives us a circular loop of magnetic field, you might imagine that a circular loop of current might give us a straight magnetic field, which is much easier to work with. So that plus the inherent symmetry in the problem allows us to make some analytical statement that textbooks love to talk about. So the result that we have is kind of limited to just along the axis of the circular loop. So we have a loop like this, and we're just talking about the middle axis like that with call that Z because this here is R. Some Z away, we can derive what is the magnetic field at this particular point. And because of the symmetry, the magnetic field always points along my Z axis. In the case of a single loop, we have this particular result. And they're asking us, since we at somehow at this point, we know that we have some size of the magnetic field. Somewhere out here, we're going to call that B1. It has exactly half. How far away is it in terms of what is Z? So we have our BO where Z is equal to zero over zero, which is so then R squared is three halves. So that becomes R cubed. That becomes a simple R, like that. So then that tells us B1 must be exactly half of that. So instead of a 2, we have over 4R. So then it's our job to relate my B1, which have some unknown Z, and equate to it this value. After crossing a bunch of things out, and rearranging. And we pick up an R cube because there's R square here and an R there. So that when we raise both sides to the two thirds power to get rid of that thing, we end up with two to the two thirds. Funny fraction, no power, but just a number and R square. We then subtract away to solve for Z factoring out the r square so i subtracted r square over here then i factor out the r square and then we square root both sides and this here you can get from the calculator it gives you some decimal number so you can say that z is roughly equal to 0.77 r and that's applying and using the derived results for a single loop of wire. We can of course further extend this into a coil that instead of one loop we have a bunch of loops lined up as a coil called a solenoid and that gives us another common derived result that you can plug in numbers for. So I'll leave that up to you to kind of go through in your own textbook.